probably going to be a lot of questions. Kavitha, how do you sell a five-figure offer in the relationship space? Because when value exceeds price, that's when people buy. But how do you demonstrate that value for your audience and your prospects? So we'll go live. I never know when we're live. So probably are now. Uh, if yeah. you guys can see us live, hit a hashtag live down below. Hit a hashtag replay if you're watching the replay. Um, I've got Kavitha here with us, one of our seven-figure CEO clients. And she is absolutely incredible. She is a marriage coach for physicians and has absolutely just taken everything that we teach and uh, just blown up and has built an amazing team, amazing programs that make amazing transformation. And I have her here with us today to share some of that insight and that wisdom with you. So Kavitha, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> uh, I'm super excited to be here. And uh, yeah, I've been, I've been lucky to stumble onto Andrew and his team and uh, uh, happy to be at this point. Yeah, our, our journey was an interesting one. We started an authority accelerator together. I think, did you find out about us through our Facebook group? You know, I have no idea. I have no idea <laughs> how I first found you. <laughs> yeah, and, and we went through authority accelerator. You started growing your Facebook group. And yeah. tell, us, tell us a little bit about that, um, where you came in and what you got out of authority accelerator. Sure. So by the time I found Andrew and Authority Accelerator, I had been in business in the online world for about uh, a year and a half or so. And um, it, I, it was going okay. Like I was doing one-on-one -on -one, um, programs and uh, I got clients through people knowing about me from other physician groups and um, it was working but it was also a lot of anxiety and hustle, not knowing which month would be a good month or which one wouldn't. Um, so there's always this sense of, uh, this is a precarious deck of cards and it could just fall apart at any one moment. And it would, like if I was busy one month with other things, then you know, it would show in how many clients we brought in. So there was that unsteadiness and then I joined Authority Accelerator and the first thing that blew my mind, which looking back, I'm like, duh, it should have been obvious, but it wasn't, is that I needed to have my own tribe, right? Instead of fishing in someone else's pond, I needed to create my own pond. And that was a turning point for me. Um, as soon as an authority accelerator really laid it out step by step on how to create that group, how to bring in people into the group, how to name the group, how to create the banner, like so simple, so easy. And as soon as I created that and had a couple hundred people in the group, then it just became its own machine, um, like a snowball effect. And also you guys really laid out how to create a promo cycle, what to talk about in the first few weeks, I remember still downloading, I still have it actually, the, um, the thing on Airtable where you say in your profile, in your personal profile, week one, say this, week two, say this. And then in the next tab, it's like, okay, now it's in the group. Week one, say this, week two, say this. And I was just like following it um, to the letter and taking massive action. And um, it just, it started feeling easy. Yeah. I love how you really turned it into your own thing and developed your own methodologies around it as well. And now you're getting like 50 people on your Facebook lives for those Transformation Tuesdays, which oh, is Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Any, at any one time, it's 50 to 70 people, and that's, that's been really fun. Yeah, that's amazing. So we actually skipped it. Um, tell everybody a little bit more about what you do, the people that you help, how you help them, and why you help them. Sure. So I'm a physician and I help other female physicians heal their relationships. Many times it is their primary relationship with their spouse, but sometimes it's not. Many, many physicians will come into our programs to heal their relationship with their mom or their adult child. Um, so it could be any relationship, 
but they are primary intimate relationships basically. And we have um, a 90 day program called Heal Your Relationships in the Inside Out, HYR for short. And um, we help them sort of heal their own triggers and come from what I call come from love, not for love. And then be able to transition and take that energy and heal the space between you and your the people that you love the most in your life. And it's um, it's been an amazing journey. Now we've had like I think almost 150 to 200 people somewhere around there go through the program. And uh, it, I do that. Why I do that is a good question, Andrew. I do that because my father was a very famous physician. And so we had what looked like the perfect life. You know, we had a big house, we had all these cars, we had staff and it was almost like a, a, a fortress that couldn't be penetrated from the outside because it looked like we had the perfect life. And I see that with physicians here too, where it looks like you have the perfect life, but because of that, it almost traps you from getting the help you need. And no one knows what's happening inside those four walls until things really break apart. Um, so that's kind of why I, I chose to do this. That's amazing. And I love the space that you're in. It's not a make money online space like a lot of people are in, but I'd love for you to share some value and shine some light on the sales aspect around uh, a relationship offer and uh, um, just kind of how you think about it when it comes to sales and getting those objections and how you're able to sell a high ticket offer in the relationship space and build this business in the relationship space. If you have some thoughts on that. Sure, absolutely. Um, for a long time, I was also sort of stuck on, you know, all these people who are teaching these things, they're all teaching, you know, their business coaches teach the businesses, that's not gonna apply to me. And what I learned was, that there are fundamental principles under um, any business, right? Whatever niche it may be. Um, and I was able to take those fundamental principles and then make them my own. So for example, I would not, if you are not a business coach, join a business coach and expect to just cut and paste their copy, right? It's not gonna work, their tone is different. You know, uh, for example, Andrew will say, Sure, bro, I'll send it to you. Obviously, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> your tone has to match your personality and the people that you're speaking to. Um, what I took from him, from you, Andrew, is the authentic way that you speak. And that means that it has to be authentic to me. That's mm -hmm. the principle, not the copy, mm -hmm. right? Um, so that was really helpful. The other thing that I took from that is you gotta stand out in some way. So there are a million relationship coaches, right? There are people who you know, might certify themselves as one type of relationship coach, but why, how do I stand out? What is different about me? Why your program is so helpful for me is because it suddenly showed me a new world of creating your own tribe. That was what was different about you. And so I recognized that that principle of, I need to be different from all the people out there and what is it about me and my own experience that I can use to differentiate mm -hmm. was the fact that um, I'm a physician, so I, I can speak to the brain science. And I'm also from the Eastern world, right? I'm from India and I'm also a Western psychiatrist. And the combination and the place where that meets is my differentiator. So mm -hmm. seeing again, the underlying principle and making that, uh, looking through that lens into my program is I think a couple of things that really made me stand out to my niche market. I love that. So taking the principles, but being authentic to who you are and sharing your story about from your own experience uh, is super crucial. So I know there are probably going to be a lot of questions. Kavitha, how do you sell a five figure offer in the relationship space? Because when value exceeds price, that's when people buy. But how do you demonstrate that value for your audience and your prospects for them to see, oh, I'm willing to invest into this five-figure offer with Kabitha? Yeah, great question. Um, one is, you know, people in the relationship space, including myself, we tend to not take action until things are literally falling apart. 
right? Um, whereas in something like career or business, we can, we're constantly looking at, because we spend eight hours a day thinking about our careers, we can imagine spending two hours watching a webinar because it is in furthering your career and you know that that's majority of what you do per day. Whereas in a relationship, you think of a relationship as the couple of hours that you might spend after your work time. And that is consumed with also childcare and chores and all these things. So it's really hard to imagine spending that much time to learn these things. So one of the things I learned is it has to be short and to the point. I cannot be doing an hour long webinar and expect people to be setting aside time to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, making it short and to the point. Um, second, educating them on their problems. Mm -hmm. Because we often don't have vocabulary for these things. So we just feel uncomfortable about the relationship. That's all we know to say about mm -hmm. that. Or we might know how to vent or complain about our partners to someone else in passing. That's as much as vocabulary I had about the relationship space. So giving them lingo, educating them on the vocabulary so that they actually know, oh, this is what I'm dealing with. I have certain triggers. They're coming from my past. And this is how those triggers then get transferred to this particular partner. When I change partners, the triggers will follow me, right? Mm -hmm. Educating them on that lingo was a big part of it in short little bursts. Mm -hmm. The other thing that uh, was helpful for me is... Um, talking about then how do those problems map onto my model, right? Mm -hmm. Why is my model different? And how do all these problems that I have now shown you, you have, how is that being answered at each step of my process, right? Mm -hmm. um, that was really, really helpful. Kind of like I show them, you know, the river and the crocodiles in between. And then I show them, this is how we're going to build a bridge. So you're not jumping in and getting eaten up every time. Yeah. Um, so they got to believe that they have the problem. They can, they can actually name the problem and they can feel confident that you are the solution to each part of that problem. Um, and the final piece is testimonials. Mm. So I didn't start off charging what I charge, obviously. I charge much less and then built up testimonials. And every time I got better at the messaging along with the testimonials, I was able to increase the price. And finally, I'll say anchoring the price to what they might have to pay um, when you don't have a good relationship because that is the foundation in my opinion that's the foundation from which you can reach for risky things in your career because you know even if that fails you have a safe landing place right and so when you have that you can actually do so much more in many other spaces and when you don't you will end up losing a lot of money even as physicians we often marry people who are also really really good at what whatever they do and so your uh, net wealth is the number one factor is actually getting divorced in terms of losing your net wealth, mm. right? So it's not just about um, your relationship. It's about the legacy that you're passing on to your children. The number one thing that will determine if your children are going to have a happy life, apart from safety and nutrition, is your relationship with your spouse right mm -hmm. so educating them on all of those um how costly divorce is how costly therapy is for the rest mm -hmm. of time how costly it is if your children are suffering uh later on because of not having a strong foundation so all of those four factors i think helps me charge what i charge that's amazing so like what i really pulled out of that was you're educating them on their pain points right yeah. in your content and allowing them to identify throughout their day of like, oh, I'm being triggered from X, Y, and Z. Yes. And this is a common thing that Kavitha talks about and I need to get this fixed, yep. right? And you're working with physicians who are already successful in their career. They're already making money. It's a, it's a great niche and it's, it's something that, uh, uh, that you are, a physician, right? So you can talk from that experience. So, yes. And the biggest thing is showing them the costs of uh, the cost of inaction or um, uh, uh, COI, cost of inaction, 
instead of ROI. And yeah. sometimes that's more powerful for people to make a buying decision because if they don't take the action on what they need to do, it's going to cost them down the road X amount on a divorce, X amount on taking care of their children, all of that stuff. So that's huge. Thank you so much for unpacking that with us. Absolutely. Is there anything else you want to add there? Well, uh, one of the ways that I see it is testimonials is a something you can get, like the ROI you were talking about, right? They can mm -hmm. see the ROI and the cost of inaction kind of posts is the other side of it. And you've got to show both. Um, at any one time, like we have testimonials where somebody will say, you know, the weekend before I joined HYR, I had met with an attorney and had gotten divorce papers. And here is where I am 90 days out, right? So showing what you can aspire to and also the cost of inaction back and forth. Amazing. Yeah. And with those testimonials, that's where we get the majority of our sales where somebody's like, I saw this testimonial by Colt Gordon or Kavitha, and they were in a similar spot that I was. And that's why I joined, yada, yada, yada. So that's a great point. Kavitha, I don't even know if we're live, so I'm going to check out <laughs> if we're live in the group. Okay. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them down below um, and we will get those answered for you. Um, yep, we are live in the group. Yay. Oh, we've got some awesome people on here. Marianne is here. Hi, Marianne. <laughs> got Brandy, Kevin, Renee, Justin, Doug, SJ. Awesome. Good to see you guys. Um, so I think what happened in quarter four of last year with you launching your MRR program, your higher ticket program, and really doubling down on building out your team has made this year, like this year is going to be freaking crazy and awesome for you. Um, so you, you were basically a one man show for the longest time. And now you have eight team members. Yes. So tell us a little bit about that experience. Who was your first hire? What was the experience of the first hire and how'd you ramp up to eight? Oh, good question. I'd have to think back. So I was in one man, one Man Woman. show for a long time. <laughs> and uh, finally, I think the first hire, and I don't remember, maybe mid of last year was when I got a VA. That was my first hire. And that also came out of working with you, Andrew. And um, you just, there's a video that you have about how to hire your first VA. And if you are not, if you don't have a VA, you are the VA or something like that. Um, so that was really helpful where you talk about point by point, how to know what to delegate, where to find the VA and all these things. So that really helped. That was the first person that I was, you know, like here, take my schedule here, take my, um, you know, paying other team members and all this thing, uh, which came later actually, cause she was the only team member, but it really helped to have the first VA. And then the next person that I took on was uh, an assistant coach. And uh, this person, was it? I think it was the next hire. I'm not sure if the closer came, the setter came before that or not. I don't remember. But mm -hmm. somewhere around there was the assistant coach and then the setter. Um, the assistant coach was someone who uh, is still with us and is also a physician who had gone through HYR and done tremendously well and is amazing. Some of the insights that she has, it takes what I say and makes it a lot better. <laughs> so she is great. Um, so somewhere around there, we had an assistant coach. And then I also got a setter, also a physician who had gone through our programs. And now uh, over time, we started just building what you call the coaching bench. And now, now we have two assistant coaches, both physicians who went through the program. We have a head coach that we just bought on. Um, and then we have two setters, also both of them physicians who went through the program. So they can actually speak to what physicians might be fearing. Like, is this all a scam? What is this thing, right? They can actually say, no, I am a full-time physician. I did have time still to do this because it's the program is set up like that. It is not a scam. Kavitha, you know, is legit. And this is what we did. And so 
over time in six months, we managed to go from one VA to one VA, two setters, one closer, two assistant coaches, and now we're bringing on a head coach and a integrator slash COO who just joined. So that's how we went from one woman show to eight team members. And I can say that that has been one of the best things I've had. I would have stopped the business at some point, I think, because mm. it was growing too fast and I was getting too burned out and overwhelmed. And it's not yeah. my strength. Organization is absolutely the last thing that anyone should try to have me do. <laughs> I'm terribly bad at organizing and time management and um, implementing these kind of things. I need other people whose genius that is. And yeah. so having a team allowed me to expand and create the backend program, the MRR that Andrew's talking about, uh, which has been uh, another huge way to offshoot earnings. And also I cherry pick the best people that I enjoy working with. So it actually gives me energy to be in the backend program. Um, and all of that wouldn't be possible without a team. Yeah, I love it. And you did it in the perfect order. And thank God you did it the way that we teach it because some yes. people don't. But getting a, a virtual assistant or executive assistant in place, getting things off your plate, um, moving on to stabilizing delivery with an assistant coach, and then doubling down on sales and getting more sales calls booked with a setter. And then when you're getting a lot of sales calls, bringing a closer in and to close those sales ultimately. And then um, now with expanding your delivery team and your sales team, and now bringing on a COO integrator, somebody who can help you stay organized yeah. and optimize the efficiency of the team. Like you're, you're right there. I'm super excited for this year. Um, but I love that. Thank you so much for breaking that down, Kavitha. Um, I'd love for you to dive into your MRR program a little bit. Um, and for everybody watching, we call it an MRR program um, because it's a high ticket program that usually brings in monthly reoccurring revenue for the entire year. Some people pay in full. Some people do three month, six month contracts. Most of our clients do three month, six month contracts. Um, but uh, like where we're at, we have $220,000 coming in every single month this year on MRR. And you're building up to that, so it's gonna hopefully, it's hopefully. gonna get there. Um, but tell me a little bit about that experience of of launching your MRR program because I remember there was some resistance. We had conversations around it, and then it was in Q4 of last year where you finally launched it, got some people in there, and tell us a little bit about that experience. Absolutely, poor Andrew and his team. I would like you know bug them and keep saying, well, you know, I need to talk more about this. And then Avery would jump on a call with me and then I'd be like, yes, brilliant. And then I wouldn't do anything with it. And then I'd be like, no, I need to talk some more. So I ended up <laughs> pestering Andrew and Brad and Avery. And, you know, one of the best things about this team is the access um, and the the genuine desire to see your clients win is also an underlying principle that I'm taking into to my work. Um, but they, you know, you can, you can access them if you really need them and they are more than willing to try to make sure that you get past whatever obstacles you're in. But anyway, I had multiple meetings and I would come up with the MRR, but um, I was still sort of like, ah, oh, it's not fully aligning because people in HYR, because it's an emotional kind of work, there is no clear end point, right? And so they're still sort of like learning and relearning and it's more of a circular process rather than an um, upward process. Linear, yeah, yeah. yeah, so at the end of HYR, people would have great results but they would also still have some other things that they needed to um, master. So after going back and forth, I took little bits of all the conversations I had with your team and you, Andrew, and what I ended up doing is creating <clears throat> a mastery program where basically we would delve into some of the concepts, the diff some of the more difficult concepts in HYR, and we would implement right then and there. So it was more workshop style 
and deep dive style where there was more one-on-one -on -one contact with me. And we built out that, uh, we call it HYR emotional uh, and relational mastery. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a six month program and it's thousand dollars a month. So many people pay upfront, many people pay month to month, um, but it's a contract. And we just deep dive. And the best part of this was I didn't have to create new content. I didn't have to, like, we do everything on a Facebook group, really. We don't even have like a Kajabi or anything like that right now because it's a beta launch. And they have a lot of time with me, mm -hmm. which is what your backend most wants. Mm -hmm. It's time with the people that they can run their unique situations by. And that really helped us. Um, again, like every month now, we have about 20K that is already spoken for on the first of the month and has taken off so much pressure um, from me and my team. I love it. Yeah, and as you grow, as you develop this year, you, your methodologies are gonna get better, your team is going to grow and less of, less of your time needs to go into your MRR program. So you're setting it up perfectly uh, starting out and then less and less has to go on your plate to get clients results in that program. So it's perfect. So Kavitha, thank you so much for sharing everything. I'd love for you to end on, if somebody's on the fence for a seven-figure CEO or authority accelerator, what would you tell them? I would tell them I have, like most other people who are you know, setting up their online business, I have tried many, many programs. Every program has, for me, had some uh, use useful if if only a pivot if only a, oh this is the kind of program that will not work for me all of that has had good lessons but it is i've been in many of them andrew's program is the one program that i without hesitation recommend to my own clients or who are starting businesses or other physicians like if you're on the fence you need to like i will come and push you to get down the other side because it will absolutely transform your life and your business and help you get like i went from 30k months hustling to 150k months steady in 10 months right with andrew's help so if you're on the fence just you're being stupid like jump in do what you need to do follow what they say and you will not regret it man Amazing. Kavitha, thank you so much. Uh, everybody watching, if uh, you want to integrate a plan to scale to seven figures with your coaching business, hashtag plan down below, and we'll get you on a call for that. Um, and if we think that we can help you, we'll recommend a program for you. If not, then we'll uh, recommend you some other way with some other coach if you're looking for a solution. Um, but Kavitha, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for being an amazing, amazing client. You're one of my favorites. Don't tell anybody that. You're definitely one of my favorites. <laughs> thank you. But I'm so excited for this year. We're going to continue to scale this thing and blow up. And thank you so much for your time today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. It was a blast. Thank you. <laughs> See you guys. Bye.